Um, I thought our um, action away from the ball, our unselfishness, um, not only from our starting five, but how our guys' contributions we got off the bench, Jordan Hill, Revan Pritzel, Ilkanen, um, obviously um, Trice and, and Iverson as well. But uh, I liked the progress that we had made. Um, took, that was Thursday, right? Practice Friday, took Saturday off, went yesterday. Uh, obviously, we'll go again today. And preparing for Michigan, impressed with what they've done offensively. Uh, obviously, the two big guys, uh, Wagner and, and Wilson, uh, really give them a different element than they've had in a while in terms of bigs that can really stretch the floor and shoot it. And then, uh, obviously, the experience they have around them with Zach Irvin and, and uh, Walton at point. Um, I think they have six seniors on the roster. So it's a pretty experienced group. And uh, definitely offensively, from the offensive end, puts you in a lot of quandaries at times um, in terms of decisions you have to make and how fast you have to help and recover. So it'll be a pretty uh, stiff test tomorrow night from, from that standpoint. But uh, looking forward to it. Had a good practice yesterday and uh, getting ready for tomorrow night. Questions? Greg, I know you've been in the league obviously a long time, and the, the, the line generally is it's tough to win no matter who you play, no matter where. But this year, is it a, is it a little bit different even? I mean, Ohio State gets beat here, doesn't look that good, beats Michigan State. Iowa beats Purdue, which beat you guys, and then goes to Northwestern and loses by more than 30. I mean, is it? getting difficult to predict what's going to happen on a given night this year in this league. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think you've what you what we found is that parity has really been probably the buzzword. Uh, I think I, Ohio State for example is probably more indicative of how they played yesterday than how they played against us. So when you play them, where you play them, as we've said for years, sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, um, teams perform you know, and you really can't say home or road because we've seen some road teams go in and play well at places, and and uh, you know, usually you could kind of predict the upper echelon, so to speak, to be pretty stiff at home and and uh, pretty um, consistent there. But that hasn't always been the case either. So I think we're still early enough in the in the conference season that it's it's still unpredictable. Uh, will that eventually level off and and become more consistent? I don't know. I, I just see so much parity. I think you've seen some of the teams that maybe haven't been in the upper half have more experience right now. I think you've, we've seen, a, you know, obviously North, or, uh, Rutgers has struggled from a win-loss perspective, but how they've played, how hard they've played, um, you know, and then you can work your way from there in terms of the teams that have gotten more experience. Northwestern, uh, I think from what I've watched so far, Maryland is, is uh, legit and, and pretty good. Um, I, I liked what they, how they looked early, and, and obviously we don't play them for a little while yet, so I haven't really dove into them. But just watching them against common opponents, Michigan, for example, um, I think they're pretty, uh, they're pretty, and they've been pretty consistent too, uh, other than the Nebraska loss. But uh, like I said, it's it's uh, it is unpredictable. I think it it makes it exciting for fans. Um, it keeps the interest level high. But I think we've got a lot of really good teams. I don't know if there's a dominant team. But I think we've got a lot of very good teams, and, and obviously coaching and and uh, the level of play from the individual players is is pretty good. So I would assume it'll continue that way in terms of how the league will play out. And we're obviously very early in the season of that. Greg, do you think that that parity hurts you guys on a national basis? I mean, there's very few ranked teams right now in the conference. Do you think it hurts you that way? I don't think so. I think we're always looking at what makes our league, um, you know, within it. I think the more teams we can have in, in that conversation, the better. Obviously, you'd like to be the team that's out in front of everybody, and um, but I think you will. We'll see down the road if if that's something that's positive or negative. I, I think you obviously want um, you want the league to be competitive night in and night out. I think it's done a pretty good job nationally. You mentioned we don't have. A, uh, that many ranked teams, but uh, I think you see some some teams that uh, maybe are traditionally, um, for example, Michigan State's pretty young, um, Indiana's younger, um, you know, that maybe always get national uh, headlines regardless of the year. Um, but I think we've, I think you see some also some some movement upwards of some teams that maybe haven't traditionally been um, 
in the upper half or contending for NCAA tournament bids. So, um, like I said, from a fan's perspective, it's exciting. Coaching, it becomes a little more stressful, but um, that's that's all good. I, I know the players enjoy it. I know the players, obviously, with how they are now, they know each other well before they get to college. The uh, social media and the A AAU network and everything that they play in before they get to, to college, they know who's on Maryland's roster, who's on Rutgers roster, who's at Penn State. I mean, they um, there's a common connection that maybe wasn't there 10, 15, 20 years ago. Jim, Greg, it's been a little bit of an odd schedule with two open weekends in the first three weeks. Um, I, I think the grind now is 14 games in 48 days or something. Do you feel a little bit better about that, knowing that, A, you have a – an experienced team that's kind of been through this before, and and B, you've you've been able to hold your your um, starters minutes in in check a little bit so far. Yeah, somewhat. I think not not so much that I had really in or that I'm so adamant about that, but I wanted to make sure we tried to continue to develop and 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 push the guys coming off the bench and and build that too. Uh, so that was kind of twofold in the plan with it. Um, you know, I think we've we've tried to use when we've had extra time between games. Try to use it wisely. Some of it's been developmental in in its design. Some of it's been just completely days off. So knowing what's coming down the road, but also at the same time, we're still taking the one game at a time approach and not trying to look too long term. Um, I think the experience can help us. Um, I think it's helped us already. I notice how our guys approach it. Just um, they don't they don't waver there's not a lot of up and down uh, they approach every day pretty consistently and um, you know that's in large part that's the mindset that's been here for a long time so that's they've gotten that from guys before them and they're doing a good job of passing it on to the younger guys so um, we, we need to continue to get better every day I think that's just the approach we take and and uh, understanding that the next game is the most important um, and approach that every day that way. And I think as long as we stay in that time, that mindset, th there's going to be ups and downs. We understand that and, and know that. We just try to be as consistent and continue to improve as much as possible. You mentioned play off the bench. How does Jordan Hill use how he played on Thursday against Ohio State and, and move that forward to continually give you that? Yeah, I think he was very opportunistic. He went in and, and did the things he's capable of, didn't get too – outside his lane, so to speak. Um, and he's been in a little bit of a precarious situation that I've asked him to play, you know, a perimeter position on the scout team. And, and knowing that he has some experience with us, uh, or meaning the group, the starting five, and the, the first two or three that are off the bench, he has experience with that group. So I've left him on the scout team a little bit more to make them a little more consistent. And he's um, handled that responsibility very well. So knowing that he's not going to get maybe as many reps over with the regular rotation, but come game time, he's got a—he's expected to know what's going on. So uh, he's been able to get more repetitions on the scout team and, and continue to improve his game there, while at the same time understanding what his responsibilities are on on the other side of the floor. So he's handled that pretty well. Um, from your Michigan film study, uh, what do you see out of them? What's impressed you about them? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the two big guys on. Wagner and, and Wilson uh, give them a dimension that maybe they've had one big they can shoot the three or stretch you from the perimeter but not maybe two at the same time so that uh, obviously stands out right away if you look at their numbers and watch them play and both of their them have the ability to put the ball on the floor too I mean Wagner made some plays on Saturday against Nebraska that are uh, Kaminsky like in terms of putting the ball on the floor so uh, I know John is pretty happy with those two and how they played and how they developed uh, but he's also got some experience around him, you know, in those two with, with Walton at point and uh, Zach Irvin on the wing. So they've been able to uh, – scoring has not been an issue for them. You know, they've been able to put the ball in the basket pretty consistently. Um, that'll be a huge challenge for us in, in how much stress they put on the defense in all five positions because most of the guys they have on the floor can shoot the three. Some aren't shooting it as well as maybe capable uh, according to numbers, but uh, – but they obviously all are, have potential to, to hurt you from deep. And that, that puts extra stress on how far you can come off, how much you can play in the paint. Um, you know, so having two bigs that can shoot really uh, you know, will put us in some d 
tougher decision making uh, positions in terms of the defensive end. Anything else for Coach? Oh, no Packers questions. No. Our hall, our hallway is pretty quiet. The the Bears and Vikings fans are really docile today. <laughs> like, Cowboys fans have all disappeared. Thought it was awesome. Aaron made a heck of a play. What a catch! Great kick. Perfect ending for a Packers fan. My phone was really quiet too. I had to actually reach out to people to remind them about the game. All right. So, that's all I got. Thanks, Greg. All right, thanks.